Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the SDL programming series. In this lesson, I'm going to go ahead and revisit something that we've seen before. And in fact, if you've been following this series, you might remember this nice scrolling texture example here. It's actually from a way old lesson, which you can find in the playlist. So make sure that you go ahead and check that out in the description. But what I want to go ahead and talk about is this nice demo with the scrolling water that we created last time is, well, I kind of fake this effect. And what do I mean by that? Well, let me go ahead and show you in the code here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just show you in the code that we had a little bit of a hack here. So if I go ahead and just scroll through this example here, you will find here in our main loop where I is doing this. And in fact, I've been doing this in a lot of the demos for simplicity, other than the actual frame rate example, is I had this little hack here to slow down our simulation. So let's actually spell simulation correctly. And then let's get rid of this little delay here. Now the delay was artificial to just slow down our program. And I think it's a great thing to do when you're just learning SDL to slow down the program so that it can run at an appropriate speed. And then you can start implementing your frame independent movement and frame capping and these sort of things. But something that we can also do is set up the vertical sync, or that is to sync our SDL application to the refresh rate of our monitors, which is usually 60 Hertz or maybe 70 Hertz in that range. So let's go ahead and run this application without the delay. And then I'll show you how to get that smooth scrolling without using this hack here. And then you can of course implement frame independent movement and some of these other things here. So go ahead and recompile this program on Linux. And then what we're going to go ahead and see and watch your eyes as I bring this window back into the screen is things are moving very, very quickly and they don't look quite as nice anymore. So we're definitely going to need to add in this vertical sync here. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, this is something that we set up with our renderer. Now we can sort of turn it on and off and I'll go ahead and show you how to toggle this, but this is where I'm going to be looking here. So uh, setting up our renderer. Now, there's a few different things that I want to talk about here because there's sort of the SDL three way that's going to do be coming up here. But I want to go ahead and still show you this on SDL two because it'll be useful to still know how to query and set the state of the render as you need it here. OK, regardless, this won't change that much here. So let me go ahead and make our code uh, available here. And let's navigate to the appropriate uh, help pages here. And uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just take you through the index of the help here. And you can search for vsync to find the related functions here. So again, you'll find the SDL2 functions. And as you know, we are moving towards SDL3 in this series on beyond here. But you can find some of the things that are going to be really nice, like just getting the render vsync and setting the render vsync. So if I go ahead and check those out, we can go ahead and see if the vertical sync is enabled or not by just calling this function and passing in uh, an integer here to see the state of our current render. And then we can, of course, just for our current render, set the vertical sync by passing in a one or a zero. So that's going to be the SDL three way to do it. I'll show it at the end of the video just uh, for this function. Um, but let's go ahead and rewind back to the SDL two stuff because again this stuff as i understand isn't going away and it's just going to be useful to uh, have available anyways so what we can actually do is again just toggle the vsync here so let's just go ahead and do the simple thing here uh, and again if i look at this function sdl render set vsync and sdl uh, render vsync and being able to set it one uh, and zero again very similar functions here so let's go ahead and under here I'll go ahead and set the vsync. I need to pass in our render and a one here. Let's go ahead and recompile this uh, and run it here. And hmm, looks like, uh, again, undefined reference to this function here. So again, maybe not available on my current uh, SDL setup here. Let's go ahead and see here that this is available or perhaps, again, an older uh, version of SDL that I have here. So again, you might have this available. It might just work, and then you're all set to go. Or again, if you're already compiling for SDL3, you could go ahead and use uh, set render uh, vsync here as shown here. Now notice the slight subtle difference here, set render vsync versus render set vsync. So again, you might see some of these functions flipping around here. But let's just go ahead um, and wind things back for a little bit. And let me show you the other way to just set this up. And this is often maybe what you want to do or default your users into, but it actually goes back to our renderer flags here. 
Because if we look at our actual code here, when we're setting up our renderer, you'll notice that we do pass in a render flag for render accelerated here. So that's one of the flags here. But we can or these flags together, and then that'll enable the different settings that we want here. So for example, we might want accelerated and vsync here. Okay, so just to go ahead and query and see what we have enabled this accelerated, let me go ahead and show you how to do that. And it's good practice in C um, to know a few of these things here. So first and foremost, how do I get these uh, renderer flags or where do they come from? Well, they're from this related structure here called SDL render info. So let's go ahead and open that up here. And we can see SDL render info has some flags here. And that's again where the renderer flags come from. OK, uh, now if we want to get the render info, again, we're going to look at the related functions here. Here's the sort of getter function here. Let's open this up. And I'm going to need to call this function here and then store the info uh, as well here. OK, so let me go ahead and comment out this function here uh, for 2.018, uh, apparently. And then let's go ahead and look at uh, setting this up here. So I have SDL get render get render info. Let's go ahead and see. There it is. And I need to pass in my render and info here. Okay. And let's go ahead and create those structures so that I actually have the SDL uh, render info. And let's go ahead and do render info. And if I just set this up as something that's just going to be stack allocated, uh, then I need to pass in the address here so that I actually store info here. And then what I can actually do is info dot. And again, this is a render info. So let's go ahead and look back at that structure here. So I got to kind of wind back here, SDL render info, matching again the same struct here. And I'm looking at the flags here. OK, now let's just go ahead and print this out here. Uh, let, let's see if we get anything meaningful from it here uh, as far as, you know, whatever our stream operator is able to give us here. So let's just call this uh, info dot flag so we know where it's coming from and again i'm just going to put this nicely on a different line here i'll go ahead and run this uh looks like oh i just made a little mistake here with the end line there we are let's go ahead and try that again and our program is running and it's giving us info flags 10 here okay uh so where where is that coming from what does this mean here exactly well we've got to decipher it just a little bit and in order to, uh, again, understand this here, and we can see our application is still running kind of wild here, let's go ahead and just put in the fix here. Um, and then you can you know, stop the video if you made it this far, and that's all you want to know here. Um, and set up the SDL to have hardware accelerated rendering. Again, if you have a platform with a GPU, and add the SDL uh, renderer present vSync here. Okay, so I'll go ahead and just uh, paste that in here. And let's go ahead and uh, make this a little bit easier so you could read. So again, you can see the SDL render accelerated and then the or don't forget the you know pipe sign or the logical or operator uh, or, or I should say not the logical or but the uh, or operator here uh, and then present vsync save. And then if I go ahead and run this now, you'll see with only that change here, this is updating as fast as my monitor uh, is going here. OK, so if I change the different modes for how I can scroll the textures here, you'll see it's moving nice. We don't have the SDL delay um, or anything like that. Now, what you will observe is that my info flags has actually changed here. It's 14 before it was 10 here. OK, so again, when you retrieve something like info.flags, what you've got to do here, if you want to check the state of something, is basically say uh, maybe result equals and I'll say info dot flags. And what I want to do is, is I want to and it with the bits of my uh, flags here, like SDL render accelerated and SDL render presets. So let's go ahead and just and it with these two uh, flags that I have here. And let's see what that result is. OK, so this means uh, do I have accelerated and vsync? OK, and I'm just going to put a, a hardware accelerated, hardware accelerated and vsync. OK, and then we'll go ahead and just print out that value here so we can see it with our result and an end line. And let's go ahead and make this full screen just so you can see here. And do I have uh, hardware accelerated and vSync? Hmm, okay, well, I got a six here.
and let me get to the little six here first but let me make a small correction here i want to actually and these here to actually see uh if the flags that i have do those match here exactly and i actually want to get a uh like a true or a false value to see if these are the settings here so do i have sdl render accelerated and vsync here so for instance if i run this with the and here uh, i do get a one right those are matching and let's get rid of one of these here and the pipe here and then if i run this now uh let's see i get a for my result a one here oh actually let's just leave it as a and here and then i'll show you what's going on here um because basically what i'm looking for is you know did i get something that was uh a, a value here that's matching the enumeration now this is kind of interesting that i get 14 here so i gotta be a little bit careful with some of these structures here um let me actually make sure i match the uh, sdl types unsigned into 32 <laughs> and then let's actually see uh what we get here uh for our types here okay uh so now i can start uh working with this a little bit all right and now let me make sure i get my uh operators correct here um, because if I use uh, unsigned and, and signed values, that's going to mess things up here. There we are. Um, so anyways, if I look at these flags here and I want to see, okay, uh, do I have basically render accelerated here and do I have uh, vsync here? All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and again, if I run this here to test if I have render present vsync and I uh, take the result of this with my flags again i should get um something like four here again a little bit of a conundrum we'll get to that in, in a moment here but let's go ahead and have to see if i have renderer uh accelerated let's go ahead and put that in and if i go ahead and run this uh again a little bit of a conundrum i get two but these values are interesting two and four for interest for instance uh so let's go ahead and uh undo these changes and let's go ahead and see if i put them together so remembering two and four and then let's go ahead and see if i have sdl renderer uh accelerated ord with you know the bits for these are basically enumerations which is going to be a little bit of a hint here and then I get a six here. Okay, so where are those coming from? Well, I've got to bring you the source code for SDL. Luckily, it's open source, um, but sometimes you can kind of infer these things. Um, but if we look at the SDL renderer.h here, and if I scroll down here, we'll see the enumeration for the renderer flags. And if I look, I have accelerated, which is two, and present vsync, which is four here. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. So again, this is just doing some bitwise operations. Again, uh, if you sort of uh, write out your binary here, uh, and let me go ahead and write out a few of these values. Uh, here we are. So let's do zero, one, zero, one. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five. And then if I want uh, six, so that'll get us here. Well, basically what I'm doing is if I'm oring these bits together, right? I'm taking two, which is my accelerated. This is my accelerated. And then four, which is my present vsync. And you'll see this is a trick in C libraries. Again, that's what I'm just showing you here in case you haven't seen it, right? Really what I care about is just this position here to uniquely identify vsync here. And then I can uniquely identify accelerated here. So if I have here these or together, I have zero, one, one, zero, which we can see is equivalent to a six here. Okay, so that's why I'm getting the result uh, six here when I am uh, anding this together with uh, my flags here. Uh, really what I should be doing is just writing a function or using that function in SDL. But anyways, that's how you can kind of see with whatever flags you retrieve, if they're being uh, actually used here or what is on, what is off and so on. Um, now let's go ahead and see how I'm getting to that 14. Again, uh, uh, you, you can imagine that must be the uh, eight here. L let's just see if that's on by default here. Let me go ahead and open up this other flag the uh, SDL renderer target texture. The renderer supports rendering to texture. Well, I'm assuming my graphics card does. It's a pretty good one. Uh, so let's go ahead and just or that in here. Again, doesn't matter how we or the bits uh, in. Uh, and let's go ahead and see if that is true. That is true. Okay, so I am getting a result here of 14. Um, and again, just to let's go ahead and see a false result here. 
uh, if I go ahead and or these together, let's do SDL renderer uh, software, I believe is the other one. So here we should actually finally see a zero here. Uh, again, this message isn't meaningful, but what's meaningful is my flags that are set up in the software renderer. So again, that's why I was getting a 14 here, uh, which might have appeared as a little bit of a mystery. It's because, well, we support this by default. This isn't something that I had to toggle on here. So anyways, you could write your own little function here to um, return if you have vsync on or off just by oring these bits. So just wanted to show you that that's probably one of the helper functions that's given in things like SDL uh, three here, which again, I will show, uh, you know, you'll just have these functions for either setting the vsync uh, or getting the vsync. And again, SDL two has some of these here. You just need to make sure that you're using apparently a version that's newer than mine from where I set this up. So anyways, with that said, let me go ahead and just show this nice uh, rendering here. Again, what we covered here is that you don't have to, in your code, uh, use this little hack here for delays. You can just set the vSync and get a nice 60 hertz, 70 hertz, or whatever your monitor is refreshing at display. If you're on a VR system, maybe that's 90 hertz or whatever. Um, and again, you'll still probably want to implement things like frame capping and frame independent movement and all these sort of things. But again, you could use uh, vSync to make sure that you don't exceed that rate and have some uh, you know, system that's running very fast. Most of the time, again, if you're writing a custom engine and these types of things, you'll want control over your uh, refresh rate and these things are very fine uh, control. So that's why I tend to do it. But again, if you're just writing a, a game uh, or just playing around, again, I like to just enable vSync and it's really easy to use here. And then also what we covered in this lesson is just some little tricks here for uh, bit manipulation. <laughs> and again, just be careful with our operators here, uh, whether we're using and uh, a single one to test our sort of bits, uh, or uh, if we're anding here, uh, which will just give us a true or a false value if we matched all of our uh, settings and got them correctly. Um, again, I was forgetting that uh, set texture target one. Let me get rid of that here just to show you uh, the difference between uh, doing that sort of uh, test here of all of our bits. All right, so the camera says it's been on long enough and it's time to go. So let me go ahead and leave this in a nice order here. And again, hopefully you understand again where some of these things like these enumerations come from and the SDL source isn't that scary to look through. It's actually quite fun. So with that said, I'll leave you with a nice scrolling water this time, properly done in 60 uh, frames per second. That's what my monitor is refreshing at. And I hope you enjoyed this lesson in the SDL series. Look forward to more and we'll hop back more into some game programming stuff shortly. All right, folks, we'll see you soon.